I'm here today with Dr. Deborah Kwan, who's head of MRI at the Cleveland Clinic Heart and Vascular Institute, and she's going to talk to us today about MRI and when it's used. Mm -hmm. So cardiac MRI is a very um, incredibly useful tool that we like to uh, perform in patients with cardiac disease. Um, it helps us to really characterize the um, heart muscle function as well as the size and how the heart may have remodeled or distorted its shape um, and size uh, in response to cardiac disease. So it can be very um, useful for physicians to know this information because it can help um, guide how they treat patients um, and also to, it allows us to characterize the muscle tissue in terms of if there's scarring of the heart or um, inflammation or edema in the heart, um, which may signify certain types of diseases. We get a lot of questions about MRI safety, mm -hmm. especially if people have had surgery or mm -hmm. devices. Yes. Yeah, so um, uh, most of the cardiac uh, devices and um, uh, things that are used for surgery are MRI safe. Mm -hmm. um, we don't like to do MRI immediately after a stent is placed um, or immediately after surgery is done um, because there can be some movement um, when uh, they're freshly placed. Mm -hmm. um, but when, they're, we, um, you know, when they've been placed and it's been you know, a couple weeks or months, um, it's very safe to uh, do cardiac MRI. The, the um, things that make MRI sa uh, unsafe is when a patient has um, iron-based type of metal in the body, such as shrapnel um, mm -hmm. or bullet uh, fragments. Mm -hmm. Um, those things can move um, and get dislodged in the magnet, and so if it moves and causes shearing of a vessel, that could be become very unsafe. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there's different websites that people will look at, and yes. it will say that it's safe, conditionally safe, mm -hmm. or safe based on so many, I don't know, measurements of MRI. Yes. What does all that mean? Yeah, so um, there's different magnet strengths. Mm -hmm. um, there's a one point five Tesla um, magnet and mm -hmm. then there's a three t uh, Tesla magnet. And the stronger the magnet, the more it could cause heating of potential uh, metallic objects or movement of mm -hmm. metallic, metallic objects. So, when it, so for certain devices, if there's some concern, they'll always say to have it done on the lower mm -hmm. magnet strength, such as the 1.5T. Um, here at the Cleveland Clinic, we have a magnet of both strengths. Mm -hmm. So um, if a patient has a device where there's concern and it's um, considered safe, but uh, usually it's at the 1.5 uh, Tesla level, then we'll um, make sure the patient gets it on the 1.5 Tesla um, magnet. Um, in regards to conditional versus non-conditional, that mm -hmm. terminology is mostly used and regarding um, ca uh, cardiac pacemakers mm -hmm. and um, defibrillators. Mm -hmm. And the safety of the um, devices actually have been shown to be um, very good, even in the non-conditional devices. Mm -hmm. um, there was a very large study published in the New England uh, Journal of Medicine that um, showed that there was a, a very, very low rate of uh, uh, complications with cardiac MRI. Um, so whether or not it's conditional or non-conditional doesn't necessarily impact the safety of getting the MRI, but it does impact um, how much um, testing or preparation has to be done before mm -hmm. the, um, the patient gets the uh, MRI because they have to interrogate the device, they have to make sure that um, the patient gets a chest x-ray, that all of the technologists are aware um, and have all the safety mechanisms mm -hmm. in place. And most um, cardiac MRI centers have a very regimented protocol mm -hmm. that they step through to make sure that that happens for the safety of the patient. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Yes. Um, Another thing, just I guess to re-emphasize, the people that have valves or sternal um, closure wires, uh -huh. wires could yes. you just you know yes. say it again about yes. the safety of that? Yes, yes. So those uh, uh, those are metallic objects, but again, they're not ferrous-based mm -hmm. metallic uh, metallic objects. So um, those are all safe, mm -hmm. um, and we've imaged many patients here at the Cleveland mm -hmm. Clinic, and we have lots of valve patients who've had open heart mm -hmm. surgery. Um, and they've come through, some of them with multiple MRIs that we're um, uh, reviewing serially over time, and it's um, been incredibly safe. Mm -hmm. 
How long does an MRI actually take? Like, what does the patient yes. have to, to do for an MRI? Sure, sure. So it depends on the protocol that has been designated for that patient based on the clinical question. Mm -hmm. But on average, it's about 30 to 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and it also depends on the center. So there's some centers, uh, particularly if you go to an academic center that's doing a lot of cardiac MRI research, mm -hmm. they may have extra research protocols that would lengthen the, the, the time of the study. So mm -hmm. it could, in some centers, it could go up to an hour, but typically it's about 30 to 45 mm -hmm. minutes. And um, I understand that the machine is closed in. Mm -hmm. So what about for patients that are um, claustrophobic? Yes, that's a great question. I, I'd say that about um, 15 to 20 percent of our patients coming um, have some element mm -hmm. of claustrophobia. And actually a good amount are able to go through without needing um, mm -hmm. pharmacologic help. Um, I think if they just know what to expect um, and if they have um, reassurance from the MRI tech um, about what's going on, they're actually mm -hmm. able to get through without the need for um, help. Um, however, we are offer um, Xanax before the MRI. If patients go in and they're just like, I can't do it. Mm -hmm. um, we can give them some sedation beforehand, but they have to make sure that um, they have a driver um, mm -hmm. because they can't drive home after getting um, sedation. Um, here at the Cleveland Clinic, we also offer um, a more holistic or alternative strategy for um, addressing claustrophobia. Um, Angel Lawrence is one of our uh, MRI techs who has been doing this there. It's kind of like aromatherapy, mm -hmm. um, and it's gotten um, a good amount of patients through the MRI scan um, without the need of Xanax or pharmacological help. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, are there any patients that should not have an MRI then, other than claustrophobia? Is there, are there any other contraindications? Yeah, so for patients who can't hold their breath for mm -hmm. 10 to 15 seconds, um, the image quality will not be very good. So um, we, uh, we, the patient has to uh, feel that they can do that mm -hmm. um, and follow those instructions for breath holding. Um, also patients who have significant arrhythmias, the image quality can be somewhat um, degraded. Mm -hmm. um, and also patients who have um, acute renal uh, uh, failure, mm -hmm. um, the gadolinium, if, there, if there's need to use um, contrast, the gadolinium uh, might not be a, a good thing to do for patients who are uh, having acute kidney injury. Mm -hmm. So um, those are usually the main uh, issues. Um, people who have brain aneurysm clips, um, if they were put in um, you know, many years ago, those may mm -hmm. not have been MRI safe. Um, okay. So um, usually when patients have an MRI ordered, they go through a, a safety checklist that they have mm -hmm. to write down, um, you know, all of the prior procedures and devices that they have had, and then we go through and screen and make sure that everything is safe. Mm -hmm. So um, if you could give one final summary, bottom line about MRI testing for the heart for patients, what would you say? Yeah. I'd say that um, cardiac MRI is a fantastic imaging modality that can really give a, a, a great amount of information for your physician. Um, it's really the gold standard um, way for us to evaluate the heart function size and um, the tissue characterization of your heart. Um, so it can uh, provide an incredible amount of information. Mm -hmm. um, there are some um, technical issues um, based on um, you know, being able to hold your breath and um, uh, the uh, arrhythmia part that mm -hmm. makes MRI a little bit more um, uh, intensive in terms of uh, technique. Mm -hmm. um, but for, for patients, I think that most patients tolerate it really well. It's mm -hmm. really the ones that have claustrophobia that have the, uh, mm -hmm. trouble with it. Um, but I think it's a fantastic way for us to really assess the heart function. I forgot one last important question. Patients probably want to know, do they get the results right after the test, or when do they even get the sure, results? Sure, sure. I guess it depends on where they're mm -hmm. getting their cardiac mm -hmm. MRI done. Mm -hmm. um, here at the Cleveland Clinic, we read um, all of our studies on the same day. Mm -hmm. um, but And then those um, results get posted into the medical chart mm -hmm. um, and sent to the ordering physician immediately. Okay. Um, and so typically the patients have to go through their ordering physician mm -hmm. Um, in order to get to the results, but I know that nowadays people have access to my chart, um, mm -hmm. and if the um, chart is set up such a way that the the results get posted mm -hmm. um, right away, then that's another source for the um, patients to get the results. But typically, they have to call their mm -hmm. physician to to get the results. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for all this information. Yeah. I know it will answer a lot of patients' questions about MRI. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Mm -hmm.